I have a grudge against hypercharged. Allow me to explain. When I first saw them, I thought that it would be some sort of crazy moment where everything you knew about one character would come together in some sort of goddamn Kamehameha rage 5 second moment. Yet, Grudge just stuck to this stat increase buff system that I honestly completely hate. So, today I will be working every single hypercharge to make it fit my golden vision of making every single hypercharge completely unique and fitting the brawler uniqueness and mechanics. Hope you enjoy. Attention, this video might be extremely controversial, so if you disagree with any of my opinions, please do not hurt me. And starting off we have the initial brawler, Shelly. Because she is the first brawler one log, I don't want to make her over complicated as I usually do stuff around here. So she will have 3 buffs and 2 nerfs to the hypercharge. The first buff is that the hypercharge rate will be increased from 30% to 35%. Something very simple, very easy to understand. Now instead of needing 3.33 supers to get your hypercharge, which even though Shelly is well, Shelly, it is just way too much. And now you will need 2.85 super, so you can get the hypercharge before the third super, which can be pretty helpful. The second buff it is, I would say, something more to a technical buff, but now your hypercharge super will now pierce through walls. In case you don't know, even though your attack can pierce through enemies, it cannot pierce through walls, so the projectiles from your super can get kinda wasted in case you hit any walls. And now with the hypercharge that would no longer be an actual thing, which would be a tiny but in some scenarios significant buff. The final buff and for sure the most important one would be a new passive while hypercharge. Whenever Shelly would get hit or receive damage, so crow poison, byron poison, poisons and burnings would count as well. Whenever she would receive any damage, she would get a 33% movement speed increase from 0.4 seconds. So kinda of an inverted scale seconds of power, but instead of just getting a very boring stat increase to the movement speed, you would now get a reaction where it would be good for you to activate the hypercharge while you had full HP and it would also make a very climatic moment where you would have to be very precise whether you do you want to receive damage to get the speed buff or will you just try to play a little bit more passive. Obviously with so big buffs she will need two nerfs. First off the bonus damage of the hypercharge will be removed which was not really that much to start off. 5% damage buff I don't think anyone is gonna miss that. And on top of that, the movement speed increase will be reduced from 25% to 10%. You already have the buff, the reaction attack thing, where you get more movement speed by being attacked, so you do not need as much just base stat movement speed increase. And with all of these, I just hope to make the hypercharger Shelly a lot more exciting and a little bit more on a counter-attack way, because the super will stay almost exactly the same as well, so I think that this would be a really cool hypercharge now. Next on the list, we have Colt's hypercharge. For sure, in my opinion, the most boring hypercharge of them all. It just pretty much gives you more damage and makes your super a lot wider, and most of the people just even use it because of the damage buff so this has to change in my view cold would just be while hypercharged got guy just shooting literally everywhere so I had the idea where while Colt is hypercharged he would have some sort of ego kind of similar to how Lola works but this ego would always be right next to him and it would have some tiny delay I cannot tell exactly how much delay it was because I do not have any way of testing out my ideas on literally the game so I will just say that it has some tiny delay but trust me to be tiny yet noticeable so this shadow of yours would deal half the damage but it would still give a lot of damage as you can guess because I mean you would literally be shooting double the bullets I mean the hypercharge is called double wielding for a reason it has four bullets as a symbol for a reason I guess so I mean you should be shooting double the bullets and I feel like this ego it is probably the best idea I could be asking for honestly so besides that whenever you would hit someone 
with either with your super or with your basic attack you would get back 0.1 ammo if your ego hit someone you would get 0.05 ammo back so half the amount as well the ego would not charge up your super just to be clear so you would not be extremely easy to just cycle your supers obviously with such a massive buff and i mean cold would just be shooting ever and would be shooting double the bullets so he needs some drastic nerves to start off his damage buff it would be completely removed i mean you already sh shooting double the bullets do you really think you need a 25 percent damage increase on top of that, his movement speed will be decreased from an additional 26% to an additional 8%. So it will not be also as easy to hit the bullets, because with the movement speed buff, it also gets slightly easier to hit your shots. And that's where the shadow or eagle, whatever you want to call it, gets into the play. Like, he is supposed to be the shadow of your where you just shoot a lot of bullets, and whenever you hit your super, you just get more bullets. You would be constantly constantly shooting bullets at everyone. It would be very very strong to push all of the enemy team back because you would just be shooting so many bullets that they could not even dodge it. And no, I am not talking about Rico, I'm talking about Colt, just to be clear. <laughs> Next on the list we have Jackie, and even though Jackie has, I would say, a very strong hypercharge, I feel like it is kinda lame and a bit too cheesy. So I want to add a little bit of extras and a couple of other nerfs as well to the hypercharge to make it a lot more balanced and slightly more fun. So starting off, the super effect will now last one second and a half. Yes, in case you don't know, your actual super has a duration. So now it will last actually the same as the slow effect of the hypercharge, which you can now also see where it would be the radius of that hypercharge slope. Because honestly, I don't know if it's just me, but I hate that I cannot see the radius of that slope. Sometimes it could be really handy because it feels like it is almost the entire map while it's not. That is a very weird thing. On top of that, while you are hypercharged, your super is now so but so strong that now all of the enemies, while they are being pulled into the center of your super, if they are being pulled through a wall, they will break that wall. Kinda like an Eugene super, some sort of, but in the AoE, which would just show to you how strong that new drill would actually be. Finally, while Jackie would be moving, a little bit sort of a mix between max star power and her first star power. While she would be moving, she would constantly be throwing like something close to her first star power, dealing 248 damage, which is 10% of her basic attack damage. So her drill is so but so powerful that just by walking, in case you don't notice the animation, she is like just jumping on the drill, so while she is moving, she is already dealing damage. Finally, the last buff would be that she would have a thing called resistance. For a little bit of more, slightly more OG people here, you already know what resistance is. But for anyone that does not know, the resistance effect would be that slow would be 33% less effective on you and stuns would last 33% less. So while hypercharge, it, even though it would not be as fast as it used to be, yes, I'll tell the nerfs in a second, but it will now be a lot harder to just slow you down. Now let's talk about a couple two simple nerfs. The bonus movement speed it will be reduced from plus 25% to plus 10%. I feel like with all of the buffs to the super, it should be enough to you not need to rely on a massive speed increase for you to actually be helpful. You already have the gadget, use it. And on top of that, the bonus damage would be completely removed. So I mean, again, 5% bonus damage, trust me, you're not gonna miss it. You can just use the damage here to get a lot more value. With this, I just hope that Jackie does not rely so much on the movement speed and a little bit of cheesy on her hypercharge as well, and make the hypercharge a bit more complex so that your super can really shine. Next on the list we have Bull's Hypercharge. So to start off, I want the hypercharge rate to increase from 35% to 45%. So, now instead of needing 2.85 supers, which for Bull's case, it actually takes a lot. Now you would only need 2.22 supers, which would make a lot easier for you to get that first hypercharge. 
Now, about the hypercharge itself, while you are on the hyper super, on, on the hypercharge super, whatever you want to call it, now it is impossible to stun you or to knock back you or even slow you. So you have pretty much a frank gadget while you are on your hypercharge super, besides the 80% shield that you already have. Besides that, when your super stops, either because you reached the end of the super or because you reached uh, an unbreakable wall, you will execute the second gadget ability. So always at the end of your super you would deal a shockwave that would slow down all of the enemies for one second and a half. Which it is a small yet I feel important extra that will just make your super even more deadlier. Especially if you did not use the second gadget, which already makes the super deadlier enough. And finally, whenever you hit your, whenever you activate your hypercharge, you also execute that second gadget ability. But besides all of the stat, uh, slow effects and everything, it also gives you 25% of your super. So that means that when you activate the hypercharge, and if there's actually a couple people around you, you can charge the rest of your super and just use it. And a final extra, it is that while Bully's hypercharge, he has resistance, like Jackie. So slows are 33% less effective on him, and stuns last 33% less time, which makes even harder to counter his hypercharge overall. But with all of these amazing buffs, there obviously had to be a couple nerfs as well. So the bonus damage would be completely removed. You're already starting to see this a lot of times actually. But yes, he would no longer deal bonus damage with the hypercharge because let's be realistic, Bull does not even need more damage. What are you talking about? His shield would be reduced from plus 25% to plus 12%. Your shield should be the shield from the hypercharge super, not just a stat increase in my opinion. And the hypercharge bonus speed should be decreased from 25% to 15%. So you're not as fast even with the hypercharge, which will obviously make it a little bit trickier to assassinate people, but you can just use the super to get to them. Next on our list we have Spike, and trust me when I tell you, this is gonna be a wild one. So starting off, whenever your attack explodes, or at the end of the area of the projectile, your spike would also explode shooting the exact same pattern of spikes. So that meant that while hypercharged, whenever his attack would explode and just shoot spines, he around himself would also explode those same spines. So in technically, you could deal double the damage around tanks that were really, really close to you. And this would obviously make Spike a lot easier to defend himself without necessarily giving him a bonus damage. On top of that, Spike now, while he's hypercharged, he's summoning a lot of spikes from the ground around him. So while hypercharged, he has a little bit of a, something close to a Cordelius trait where people inside that circle they would receive 400 damage per second and they would receive a slow that would be half as effective as his super. Attention, you can increase this effectivity by equipping the mythic gear as well. So if you got close to spike not only you could you would be taking the huge risk to get hit by the bonus spikes from he shooting off himself while hypercharged as he would also receive the 400 damage and get slightly slowed just by standing close to him. And on top of that, while when you activated the hypercharge you would shoot 10 spikes in all directions which would obviously just add up that defensive capability of the hypercharge. The final buff is that while hypercharged for whenever enemies got killed by Spike, in the spot where they died, they would summon a Cactus Pacactus. So that meant that if you actually killed someone, you would get a Cactus Pacactus as a reward, which it is, I know it's literally your gadget, but it incentivizes people to use the, the hypercharge in a, a more offensive way as well, so that it is not just entirely a defensive mechanism, it can also be used as an offensive mechanism and you also get reward by doing so.
but with so many awesome buffs and honestly pretty crazy ones as well, Spike would obviously have received some nerfs. His bonus speed would be reduced from an extra 20 26% to 20%, which is small yet kind of noticeable. His bonus damage would be removed, so <laughs> you're just already shooting spikes everywhere. Do you really need the, dam the bonus damage? And on top of that, the super bonus radius would be removed. So yes, this is the hypercharge that you would not get a single benefit to the super. You just get a lot of passive abilities that you should be aware of. But I feel like it is fair for Spy to have such, such a complex kit, because I mean, he's a legendary. Just you should have really legendary abilities and honestly his hypercharge just feels so underwhelming and this rework would make his hypercharge so incredibly phenomenal and also really fun and so versatile as well. If you have been enjoying the content so far, please consider subscribe. It took me a really long time to come up with these ideas and I am so proud of them and I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribe to the channel and watch some more content. I know we can do this together and become a really great channel, even greater than we already are. So thank you very much. Going to the next evolution, we have Pearl. So Pearl would have a lot of changes actually. To start off, the hypercharge duration will be increased from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. And on top of that, the hypercharge rate would be increased from 2.5 supers to 2 supers, which means a 40% rate to a 50% rate. It takes a lot of time to get the hypercharge, because it also takes a lot of time to get the super, so you can kinda see where the problem really gets into. When you activate the hypercharge, similar to Spike's hypercharge, you should turn the hyper cookies, which you, I will uh, explain in a second what they are, in all directions. Very similar to how Spike would work. Pearl's hypercharge effect of the super would now last, instead of 4.5 seconds, it would now last a whole 6 seconds. The bonus shield would be increased from 5% to 10%, and this is the big change. While you are on that purple burning area, all of your cookies would turn into hyper cookies. Now, what are hyper cookies, you may ask? Well, those cookies do not need you to be heated up. Which means that if you're shooting your cookies inside of that fire purple area, they would immediately be maxed out. So y you can use this hypercharge even if you're not heated up because you know that the hypercharge will heat up the cookies for you. Now, with so many buffs, I mean, obviously she needs some nerfs, so the bonus speed and the bonus damage, they are both removed. Because I feel like Pearl should be a slightly more tankier option. Honestly, I am not in favor of the bonus the in a long time, you know, a while ago. She had a movement speed increase and a HP re reduce, which I just don't agree and this hypercharge reflects that and the bonus duration allows for pearl to just while you're on that burning so just deal so much damage and consistent one as well and the shield increase just makes so that it is slightly safer for you to stand on that burning area next in our list we have charlie and i'm gonna change charlie so much that i also want to change the name of the hypercharge from pestilence what a weird name to master of yo-yo because the new hypercharge will actually be mainly focused on the yo-yo power and not so much about the spiders so well while the hypercharge is active you unload your speed uh, your ammo 50 percent faster so it's pretty much how charlie used to work before the nerf but only while you're hypercharged you just yo yo so much so fast that yo yo just go even faster when you activate the hypercharge you execute a yo yo spin attack that deals the same damage as your regular yo yo but it can just go through walls and it deals the same damage. Attention, it only has 7 tiles radius, which is actually the same as Piper's first gadget area of effect, or radius. And whenever you hit someone with your super while you are hypercharged, your hypercharge duration will be extended by 1 second. So this means that hitting your super successfully, it will also give you more hypercharge duration, which means more yo-yo attack as well. And now when your super gets destroyed, the super summons three spiders. 
with so many buffs, I mean, she obviously needed uh, a couple nerfs. To start off, the bonus damage removes. I mean, not even close. I'm not gonna let you attack faster and also deal 25% more damage. Out of the question. The bonus speed will be reduced from an additional 26% to an additional 15%. Your super no longer spawns spiders when you connect the super. So now, if you miss the super, you actually do not get the spiders, which is a big interaction change. You only get the spiders when your super gets destroyed. On top of that, this is something very rare, but the rate will actually be decreased from 60% to 50%. So instead of needing 1.66 supers to get the hypercharge, you now need two full supers. Usually I am a lot in favor of fast cycle hypercharge so that the hypercharge can appear a lot in the match, but her hypercharge is already so but so fast that she is a massive exception to this rule. And with this hypercharge I mostly want to enhance the power of her yo-yo mechanic and not so much about her first gadget, which is a very lame thing to be honest. Next we have what I would say one of the weirdest concepts I have probably brought this channel. The Collects new hypercharge that would be so different that I would change its name to The Collector. So the hypercharge rate would be increased from 30% to 75%. Just for you to understand how different it would actually be. So to start off, when you activate the hypercharge, you would summon a shadow or an ego, whatever you want to call it, honestly. That would have 50% less HP and deal 50% less damage from every enemy that you have collected in a 5 tile radius. Now, how do you collect? Well, collects. <laughs> That's where her name comes from, after all. I mean, it just makes sense. So, while you are hypercharged, every ally an enemy that you kill during a hypercharge, it gets collect. So, that means that when you activate a hypercharge, uh, the first hypercharge, you would summon a shadow of yourself and your allies, including their active pets at the moment. And if you killed anyone or any enemy pet while you are hypercharged, that enemy and pet would get added to your collection for your next hypercharge. And also, the hypercharge duration would be increased from 5 seconds to 6 seconds, because all of the shadows would immediately die as soon as the hypercharge ended. So we'd only have those shadows or egos or clones for only 6 seconds, which is still a lot, but 5 seconds is just not enough. All of her stat increases would be completely removed. All of her hypercharge would be around this collector tactic. Your hypercharge would get stronger and stronger throughout the battle. And because your super is also so easy to cycle, I am pretty sure that this hypercharge would not be bad. I actually feel like it would be a very strong one. Remember, the shadows would have 50% less HP and deal 50% less damage. And AI turns, they would have exactly the same AI as Larry and Laurie. So they would not just be completely dumb, they would try to play kinda smart, I guess. Next on the list we have Rose, and Rose now when you activated the hypercharge you would shoot 10 roots in all directions, similar to how Spike's first catch would work but it would just be one wave. And all of those roots, they would deal 1000 damage and they would put the enemies to sleep for one second and a half. In case you don't know what sleep is, it is pre pretty much Sandy's second gadget, which is kind of a stun, but if you receive damage while you're stunned, the stun gets removed. So it's not exactly a stun, but it is very close to that and it just helps Rose to just get to the opponent. On top of that, Rose, while hypercharged, her punches will shoot roots that will deal 60% damage. These roots, they do not put the enemies to sleep and they deal less damage. But they will kind of work similar to how Fang's ca shoe kind of work. You have the main attack and then at the end you summon those little crops, I guess, that you shoot at people. 
And for the final buff is that while she's hypercharged she can see in bushes. Her old kit is all around bushes and honestly she not having any ability that just allows her to see what's in the bushes, which is what she's all about, to me it feels very very awkward. But now, let's talk about some nerfs. To start off, her bonus damage it is removed, which again, that is something that's always appearing here. Because she does not need bonus damage, you can use the first, I mean the second star power for bonus damage. And you, the hypercharge, it is supposed to be slightly more defensive, obviously, while still being able to reach your opponents. The bonus speed will be slightly reduced from 25% to 15%. It will still be a, a good amount of bonus speed, it will not just be as much. The bonus shield, and this is a very impactful one, it will be removed. So the only shield that you actually have, it is just the shield from the super, which is still a lot to be honest. And finally, the hypercharge slow effect around her, it is now 50% less efficient. So, this, you would still have the slow, but it would now be a really strong slow. It, it kind of reminds me of how Amber's Mythic Gear works. It is a slow, it is just a very not effective slow. It would not be like that, it would be like, I believe, a 25% slow. The average slow it's like 50%. So, it would still be, in my opinion, a very decent slow. It would not just be as overwhelming when you approach people. And finally, but definitely not least, we have Lou and his new hypercharge, Never Ending Frost. So, his super would be always extended while people were standing on it. So, overall, for each second that there is one person standing on his super, the super would get 4.5% larger. So, the average super has around a 3.67 tile radius, the average super, and the super lasts 10 seconds. So if there is someone just standing in there, I know, even if it's just a bot or a pet, that means that the size of it would be increased at the end of at the end of the 10 seconds, it would be 5.33 tiles, which is just such a massive radius. Usually with radius it is hard for you to understand how large the radius is, but I'll try my best with a couple of cores for you to have a realization of how big the area would be. And on top of that, for each second that there, for each troop that it's standing on the super, for each second it will increase the duration of the super by half a second. So doing some heavy math, that means that the super can could last up to 19.6 seconds and that means that if there's still someone just standing on it the super radius would actually be increased to 6.66 tiles which would, it would just be a massive area control for Lou in just one single super on top of that a uh, time actually just not being all of the buffs completely crazy, now when the super hits the floor it deals 480 damage. Because it is weird that the super instantly freezes someone yet it does not deal damage. So with, I would say a very weird buff but it will definitely make some justice to his hypercharge and especially the hypercharge super itself. Now. His bonus shield would be removed, which was not a lot to start off, but okay. The bonus damage, can you guess it? It was removed because Louis's not a damage dealer, and I really want the super of the hypercharge to shine here, and that's what I'm working for. But with so many great buffs, I feel like the instant freeze percentage that you get when the super lands the floor, it would be reduced from 100% to 33%. So it is essentially a a, almost a complete rework, but I just made all of the things that the super previously had a lot weaker and removed almost all of the stat increases, which is well, what I'll be doing with the rest of the hyperchargers. If you like this video, please make sure to write in the comments down below to like, subscribe, because I am planning on doing two other parts for the rest of hyperchargers. I did not forget any of them, but the video would be way too long if I included all of the hyperchargers. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next video.